How you doing? I'm your man, John Wilson. Today, we're gonna to be solving this system right here using elimination. That means we're gonna do a little multiplication. We're gonna work with finding least common multiples, and we're gonna get that solution in one second. I'll be right back. All right, let's get to solving this equation right here. We have 5x plus 2y equals 24, and 2x plus 3y equals 14. When I'm solving a system of equations, the first thing I wanna be able to do is cancel out one of the variables, either the x or the y. In order to do that, I need something known as inverse coefficients. Inverse means opposite. So I need something like a positive 3x and a negative 3x in order to cancel them out. Looking at my equation right now, I don't have inverse coefficients. Positive 5, positive 2, positive 2, positive 3. The good thing is, using a little math, a little multiplication, I can create those inverse coefficients. For this particular problem, I'm gonna work with the x's. I need to figure out what I can do to turn this and this equation into inverse coefficients. Specifically, I want the five and the two to turn into some numbers that would allow me to cancel them out. In order to do that, I have to find something called the least common multiple. Find the least common multiple, I take the multiples of 5 and I take the multiples of 2. So I do 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10. I'll stop there, you'll see why in a second. I take the multiples of 2, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. I haven't found any common multiples yet, so I keep going. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 5 is, uh oh. There it is, 10. So the least common multiple of five and two is 10. What that means is, I'm gonna wanna turn this top equation here, specifically this x term, into a positive 10x. And I wanna turn this bottom equation, specifically the x term, into a negative 10x. Here's how we do that, simple multiplication. Since I'm multiplying, I'll wrap both equations in parentheses. Then, because I want a positive 10x on the top, I have to ask myself, what can I multiply 5 by to get a positive 10? I go back to my multiples. Well, 5 times 2 gave me positive 10, so I'm going to multiply this equation by a positive 2. On the bottom, I got a positive 2x. I need that to be a negative 10. So I ask myself, what can I multiply 2 by to turn it into a negative 10? I go back to my multiples and I see that 2 times 5 gave me a positive 10. Well, I don't want a positive 10, I want a negative 10. So instead of multiplying by a positive 5, I'll multiply this bottom equation by negative 5. Remember when you're doing this, you must multiply every single term in the equation by the integer you've chosen. 2 will be multiplied into 5x, 2y, and 24. Same thing happens on the bottom. Let's do that multiplication now, see what happens. 2 times 5x is 10x, plus 4y is equal to 48. So we multiply the top equation. 2 times 5x is 10x, 2 times 2y is 4y, 2 times 24 is 48. Now I'll multiply the bottom equation. Negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x, negative 5 times 3y is negative 15y, and negative 5 times 14 is negative 70. Once I finish the multiplication, I've created exactly what I need. I look at my x terms. They are inverse coefficients, which will allow me to go in and cancel them out and solve for y. So, we get to the process of combining the equations and eliminating what we don't need. The positive 10x and negative 10x will cancel out. Positive 4y and a negative 15y, when I combine those terms, I get a negative 11y. Bring down the equal sign. Over here, a positive 40 and negative 70, when I combine those numbers, I will get a negative 22. I'm now down to a one-step equation. I'm gonna divide both sides of this number by my coefficient, which is negative 11, because the goal is to get y alone. So negative 11, negative 11. These negative 11s will cancel. And I have y is equal to, when I'm dividing two negatives make a positive, 22 divided by 11 is two. So I have half the answer. 
Now that I know that y equals two, I can take that piece of information, y equals two, substitute it back into one of my original equations and solve for y. So we're gonna get rid of this real quick and we'll use this half of the board in order to find out what x is. So we're gonna pick one of these equations right here and substitute y back into it. I'm gonna use the bottom one, so I'll write that. 2x plus 3y equals 14. I know that y is two. So in my equation, I'm gonna be removing the y and replacing it with two. So I write 2x plus three. Now, very important. There's multiplication happening between the three and the y, so when I substitute in the two, multiplication still has to happen. I'll use parentheses to indicate multiplication. That's gonna equal 14. I bring down the 2x, I perform my multiplication, three times two is six, still equals 14. Now that I'm here, this is a two-step equation. I need to get the x term alone, so I have to get rid of the positive six. I use inverse operations to do that. I'm gonna subtract six from both sides. That's gonna give me 2x is equal to eight. One more step to go. I go back and I divide both sides of this equation by my coefficient, which is two, and I have the other half of the answer, x is equal to four. Now that I have both halves of the answer, because it's a system of equations, I must write my answer as a coordinate pair. Remember, in a coordinate pair, it's x comma y, so I write the x term first, x is four, y is two, four comma two, and I'm done. If I wanna make sure that that answer is indeed a good answer, I will take four and two, I will substitute them back into both equations for x and y, and I'm looking to get a true statement. Something like 24 equals 24, and 14 equals 14. If you get two true statements, it's a good solution. If you don't get two true statements, check your math, check your solution. That's all for this time. See you next time. That's another reason math matters.